Hello everyone. Today I am back with my friend and I am going to talk about the first part of our appendicular skeleton that is our hands. We are going to see how these hands are attached to our shoulder blade, what are the parts of the shoulder blade, the hand, what are the bones present here and how do they help us. Let us first talk about the shoulder blade. The shoulder blade also known as the pectoral girdle is basically this broad shoulder that you see. It consists of a bone here which is known as the clavicle. The clavicle remains attached to the top of the sternum. At the back there is this flat triangular bone which is known as the scapula. You must have noticed that when you move your hand towards the back this triangular bone projects out. This is known as the scapula. And if you look at this region in the scapula, this has a cavity which is known as the glenoid cavity. The glenoid cavity is the structure to which the ball shaped head of this bone which forms the upper arm will get attached by a ball and socket joint. So these are the parts of the pectoral girdle. Now coming to the hand that is the forearm which we call the hand. The first bone of the forelimb or the hand is known as humerus. Just to remember it, hand, humerus. So this is the first bone that we see. As you know, the ball shaped head of the humerus joins to the glenoid cavity forming a ball and socket joint. And this ball and socket joint provides 360 degrees rotation. So we can rotate our arm completely at the shoulder bone. The next joint which is attached to the lower part of the humerus, if you closely see the lower part of the humerus, it is slightly spooly shaped. If you see on the back, you see this is slightly spooly, spooly shaped which means that it looks like a, uh, you know, a structure on which we call thread, right? And this region is known as the trochlea. Here, the next two bones, that is the radius and ulna, they are joined. If you look closely then this one which is which is present here this is known as the ulna and this is known as the radius. The ulna remain attached to the trochlear region of the uh, humerus by a joint which is called a hinge joint. Now what is a hinge joint? A hinge joint is one that can move in one direction but it cannot move in the opposite direction. So when you're moving your hand, you can move your hand in this direction, but you cannot fold your hand in the opposite direction. Why? That, the reason behind it is this process, which is known as the olecranon process. The olecranon process forms your elbow, right? The structure that you feel here, this is the elbow, this is the olecranon process. So when the hand is being moved, see, when it is folding forward, it's all fine. But once it has come here and the olecranon process has gotten stuck here, it cannot go further back. Okay, so a hinge joint like this provides 180 degree movement in a single plane. So it can fold and it can go straight. It cannot go behind. So it provides a 180 degree movement. The radius is joined to the ulna. It is not joined directly to the trochlea. And here you see the wrist bones are present. Now here the wrist bones are not very clear. There are about eight wrist bones which are known as carpal that forms the entire wrist. So when you are moving your wrist, all these eight bones that are present, they show slight movement because of which you can move your wrist in all directions. All right. Coming to the next bone, these are the bones of your hand. That is when you hold your hand like this, these bones which are forming the hand, the palm of your hand, these are known as the metacarpal. And finally, the finger bones are known as the phalanges. How many finger bones do you have? It is not clear in the skeleton because this is an artificial one. But how many finger bones do we have? If we look at our own fingers, we can fold it like this. So each finger has two joints. How many bones therefore? We have one bone here, one bone here and one bone here. So we have three bones forming each finger. So 3 plus 3 6 plus 3 9 plus 3 12 and here we have two because we can just make one fold in the thumb. So we have two. So total we have 14 phalanges. These, these uh, bones are known as phalanges. They make up our digits or what we call fingers. 
So that was all about the forelimb and the pectoral girdle. We will come back with another video on the hind limb and the pelvic girdle. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned from it. Do check out our courses on our website manochaacademy.com and our Android app Manocha Academy. There you will find courses on physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, coding and artificial intelligence. In these courses you will get concept videos, live classes, quizzes, mock tests and revision notes. So they will be perfect for your exam preparations. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, Go ahead and smash that subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any of our videos. Stay connected with Manocha Academy and let's keep learning. Bye! It's looking down at me.